So our next test is one of our really important tests for testing whether a series diverges or converges, and it's what we call the integral test. So we'll go ahead and give the statement of the integral test, then we'll go ahead and prove the integral test, and then we'll follow that up with some examples of using the integral test to figure out if a series converges or diverges. So the theorem that gives us the integral test says, suppose if we have the series, the sum from n equals one to infinity of a sub n, and the terms in our series are all positive. Further, we suppose there exists a function little f and a positive integer capital N, such that the following three conditions uh, are met. First off, our function f has to be continuous. This allows us to integrate our function. Second, we need our function f to be decreasing. And third, we need our function f to give us the, uh, the terms in our series. That is, if we plug an integer n into our function f, it'll give us the nth term in our series, at least for uh, all n greater than some capital N, or it eventually works for our series after a certain point then what the integral test says is that the series itself, the sum from n equals one to infinity of a sub n, and the integral, the improper integral from capital N to infinity of f of x are going to converge or diverge together. And what the integral test essentially allows us to do is if the function that describes the term in our series is a positive decreasing function that we can integrate, well, we can go ahead and compute that integral. And if that integral converges, so does our series, if that integral diverges, then our series will diverge as well. And so next we're gonna go ahead and try to prove our integral test. And the way we're gonna do that is using a geometric proof uh, or drawing a picture. Essentially what we're gonna show is that the area underneath the curve of our function f is going to very well approximate the sum of our series. And so then we'll see if that area is finite, the sum of our series will be finite. And if that area is you know, infinite or diverging, then the sum of our series must also diverge. There's really uh, two pictures and two parts of this proof that we have to go through, and I'm gonna do them simultaneously. One is gonna show convergence, and the other is going to show divergence. And they both start with uh, drawing our curve that uh, generates the terms in our series. So unless we have a specific example, we don't know exactly what this curve is gonna look like. All we know about this curve is that it is continuous and decreasing, so it should look something like this. So we know this curve is continuous and decreasing, and furthermore, we can assume that the curve is eventually going to approach zero, because remember, the outputs of this curve have to describe the terms in our sequence. There it is right there. And from our earlier divergence test, we know if those terms aren't approaching zero, we already are going to diverge. So here we can make the assumption that the terms in our series have to approach zero. Otherwise, we already know the series is going to diverge. And so the next thing we need to add into our picture is kind of how to interpret the sum of our series as an area in this picture. And so well, what we know is that if we plug like n equals one into our function, See over here, it looks like that actually be up here a bit. If we plug n equals one into our function, the output of our function is gonna be the term corresponding to a sub one. So the next step in our two pictures is then kind of drawing an approximating rectangle for the area using either a left endpoint or a right endpoint. And so for our first picture here, what we're going to do is go ahead and draw in this rectangle and what we know about the width of this rectangle or the delta x is that it's gonna be equal to one and the height of our rectangle is gonna be equal to f of one, which we know will give us a sub one or the first term in our series. Similarly, if we plug in uh, n equals two or x equals two into our function, that'll help us create this rectangle with a height of a sub two and a width of delta x equals one again. So the area of that rectangle will just be equal to our a sub two value. And we can repeat this process for as far as we want. Like here would be our rectangle for a sub three, then a sub four, and so on. And so now what we can see from this first picture is that if we were to compute the integral from one to infinity of our function f of x dx, well then, the area underneath our curve on the interval from one to infinity would actually be a little bit more than the sum of 
all the terms excluding that first term. So it'd be like a little bit of an overestimate of the sum of a sub two, a sub three, a sub four, a sub five, and so on. And so we know the integral from one to infinity of f of x dx is gonna be bigger than the sum from n equals two to infinity of a sub n, which is essentially the sum of our series. It's really only missing that first term. So if we kind of added an a sub one to each side, we know a sub one is finite, so that's not going to really affect the convergence or divergence. So we've essentially in this picture bounded our series above by this integral. And we also know because all the terms in our series are positive, it's gonna be bounded below by zero as well. And so now what we know is if this integral, the integral from one to infinity of f of x actually converges to some finite number, maybe let's go ahead and call it L, then we can see that our series is gonna be bounded above by L or almost all of our series everything except that first term. But then we could just write a sub one plus L is bigger than the sum of our entire series, which is bigger than zero. And then kind of calling back to that earlier theorem, that uh, monotone convergence theorem, we can see that the partial sums of the series are gonna be uh, creating a sequence that is monotonic and increasing and bounded. So therefore it must converge. I'm not gonna write all those details in because I don't think that is too important. What we're essentially seeing here though is that the area underneath our curve can work as a upper bound for almost the entire sum of our series. So if the uh, area underneath our curve converges, then the uh, sum of our series must also converge. So we have a very similar proof uh, for the divergence half of our integral test. Uh, it starts off almost the same, but instead of using these rectangles, as like a right endpoint approximation to represent the sum of our series, we're gonna use left endpoint approximations and draw a very similar looking picture. And so again, if we plug in x equals one, that'll give us uh, this y value. And we're assuming that that y value corresponds to a sub one or the first term in our uh, series. And so if we give that rectangle a width of one, then the area of this rectangle, if I can actually draw it correctly, then the area of this rectangle is gonna be a base one and a height of a sub one, so its area is a sub one. Similarly, if we plug in x equals two and draw another uh, rectangle, uh, this rectangle will have a height of a sub two and a width of one, so its area will be a sub two. So if we add the area of these two rectangles together, that's like, the, uh, the partial sum of our series using those first two terms. And we can keep this going for as long as we desire. So I'll just go ahead and draw in a few more. But now what we're seeing in our picture is that the uh, area underneath our curve is actually always going to be less than the sum of the area of these rectangles. So that means the integral from um, one to infinity of our function f of x dx is always gonna be less than the sum from n equals one to infinity of a sub n. So remember in our first picture for the first half of the integral test, this inequality was reversed. And the reason we got the reversal of that inequality was because we weren't really starting with this first uh, rectangle. Um, we were starting with the second rectangle and we were seeing that the area underneath our curve from this point on after x equals one is always gonna be less than the, uh, the partial sum of our series. We kind of had to do a little bit of tricky work like uh, add in that extra a one, but that extra term is finite and it's not gonna affect the overall convergence or divergence of everything. So back to our new picture here, we see the area underneath our curve is absolutely gonna be less than the partial sum of our series. Therefore, this improper integral is gonna be less than the sum of our series we're trying to prove the divergence half of our integral test. So what we see here is that if the, uh, the integral here, this improper integral diverges, like it goes off to positive infinity itself, then we see that the sum of our series, the sum from n equals one to infinity of a sub n is gonna have to be bigger than this lower bound. But if it's gonna be bigger than positive infinity, it must also diverge or approach positive infinity as well. So that's a really quick kind of run through of the proof or the ideas behind the proof of the integral test. And remember the point of the integral test is if we're trying to determine if a series converges or diverges, 
we can check if these three criteria are met. Our function has to be uh, positive, continuous, and decreasing, at least past a certain point. And then we can integrate that function past that certain point. If that improper integral converges, the series converges. If the improper integral diverges, then the series diverges as well. All right, so earlier we have said that our harmonic series, that is the sum from n equals one to infinity of one over n diverges, and we can use the integral test to give us another way of seeing that that statement is true. So in this example, we are going to determine if the series converges or diverges, and we're starting off with our harmonic series, the sum from n equals one to infinity of one over n. So our function f of x or f of n that describes the term in our series is just one over x or one over n. That is definitely a continuous function. It is also a decreasing function. We can look at the graph of that function to see that, or we can take its first derivative and see that it's always negative. We also know the function is always positive. We have checked and we do meet all the criteria to apply our integral test. So now all we have to do to test the uh, convergence or divergence of the series is compute the improper integral, the integral from one to infinity of one over x. I'm gonna be a little bit lazy with our notation here because we've seen it all before in a thousand times. Well, maybe not a thousand times, but enough. Um, so we know is we have to find the antiderivative of this function, which is the natural log of the absolute value of x. Then we have to evaluate our antiderivative at the upper limit of integration or as we approach the upper limit of integration and subtract away from that the antiderivative evaluated at the lower limit of integration. Well, this will end up giving us something that looks like the natural log of the absolute value of infinity minus the natural log of the absolute value of one. The natural log of one is zero, but the natural log of a quantity that is approaching infinity or the natural log of infinity is also going to increase without bound or approach infinity or diverge. So very quickly, we were able to compute this improper integral. We saw that the improper integral is going to diverge, and that means our series, the harmonic series, must also diverge. So using the integral test, we know once again that the uh, harmonic series is going to be a divergent series.